be then his love accursed, since love or hate, to me alike it deals eternal woe. Nay, cursed be thou, since against his thy will chose freely what it now so justly ruse. Which way I fly is hell, myself am hell, and in the lowest deep, a lower deep, still threatening to devour me, opens wide, to which the hell I suffer seems a heaven. a method of communicating their feelings to one another by use of articulate sounds. This was indeed a godlike science. I learned and applied the words fire, milk, bread, wood. <laughs> I learned also the names of the cottagers themselves. The youth and his companion. Each of them had several names, but the old woman only had one, which was Mother. The girl was called Sister, or Agatha, and the youth, Felix, Brother, or Son. I contemplated the virtues of these cottagers and persuaded myself that they would overlook my personal deformity. I formed in my imagination a thousand pictures of presenting myself to them. I imagined that they would be disgusted until by my gentle demeanor I should first win their favor afterwards their love. in this intrusion. I am a traveler in want of a little rest. You would greatly oblige me if you would allow me to remain a few minutes before the fire. Enter, and I shall turn what manner I can to relieve you of your wants, but unfortunately my children are from home, and as I unwind, I shall find it difficult to procure food for you. Oh, do not trouble yourself, my kind host. It is warmth and rest only that I need. By your language, stranger, I suppose you are my countryman? Are you French? No, but I was raised and educated by a French family and understand that language only. I go now to claim the protection of some friends whom I sincerely love and of whose favor I have some hopes. Are they Germans? No, they are French, but let us change the subject. <laughs> I am a deserted creature and have no friend or relation upon the earth. These amiable people to whom I go have never seen me and know little of me. I am full of fears, for if I fail there, I am an outcast in the world forever. Do not despair. To be friendless is indeed to be unfortunate. The hearts of men are full of brotherly love. Therefore, rely on your hopes and if these friends are good, do not despair. Well, they are kind. They are the most excellent creatures in the world. But unfortunately, they are prejudiced against me. I have good dis dispositions. My life has been hitherto harmless and in some degree beneficial. But a fatal prejudice clouds their eyes. 
and where they ought to see a kind friend, they behold only a detestable monster. That is indeed unfortunate. But if you really are blameless, could you not undeceive them? I am about to undertake that task, and it is on that account that I feel so many overwhelming terrors. I tenderly love these friends. I have been for many months in the habits of daily kindness towards them. But they believe I wish to injure them, and it is that prejudice which I wish to overcome. Where do these friends reside? Near this spot. You would unreservedly confide in me the particulars of your tale. I may be of use in undeceiving them. I am blind and cannot judge of your countenance, but there is something in your words that persuades me you are sincere. I am poor, but it would afford me true pleasure to be in any way serviceable to a human creature. Oh, excellent woman! I thank you and accept your generous offer. You raised me from the dust by this kindness, and I trust that by your aid I shall not be driven from the sympathy of your fellow creatures. Turn to the fire, this undenizing warmth in this faint weather. Oh, how can I thank you, my best and only benefactor. Your present humanity assures me of success with those friends whom I am on the point of meeting. May I know the names and the residences of these friends? Now is the time. Uh, save and protect me. You and your family are the friends whom I seek. Do not you desert me in the hour of trial. Great who are you? the capacity for bestowing animation, yet to prepare a frame for the reception of it with all its intricacies of fibers, muscles, and veins still remained a work of inconceivable difficulty. I doubted at first whether I should attempt the creation of a being like myself or one of simpler organization, but my imagination was too much exalted by my first success to doubt of my ability to give life to an animal as complex and wonderful as man. This is, it is your journal of the four months preceding my creation. Victor Frankenstein. Cursed, cursed creator. Hateful day when I received life. Why did you create a monster so hideous that even you turned from me in disgust? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> 